Hello, this is Christian. Welcome to Angular. In this video, we'll be creating a very simple route that takes one parameter, and then I'm going to show you how to retrieve that parameter using what's called a route snapshot. Now, here's an example of a particular route that will take the product ID of one, and then matching that product ID path in the bottom, how to retrieve that value of one from this ID parameter. In Angular, you can do one, one of two ways. Uh, the first one is the easier one, it's called the snapshot. So in the snapshot method, you could look at this example here. So each of these is a particular uh, component, right? So the first component here stores the data for the banana, the uh, cherry, the apple, and so forth. Now the blue box here represents the view. So when you navigate to a particular URL that matches this pattern, the um, snapshot method is that the uh, router will generate a new component every time you navigate to a particular ID. Okay, and the other one over here, observation uh, observable is a little bit different. Here in the view, you are using a single component, but you're passing new data to that component. So therefore, a new you will never regenerate the component again. So you're using one, but you feed data to the component, and so you, in a way, you're updating the state of that component only. Now this is useful when you have. Um, child routes. We're not going to do that in this video, but if you have a lot of um, in that scenario, this is usually really, really useful for that, and you have to use observable in order for this to work. Over here is usually when you have like a list of items, and you click on the item, and it shows a new component and a different view. In order for the content to be um, updated, you have to either navigate to a different page or come back and regenerate that component again. So it's a little bit different, but in this video, we're going to do a snapshot. So let's go see how this is done in Angular. Okay, so here's our simple app again. Uh, this time, we're going to add a maybe a user, yeah, add a user a data field data, and then we're going to go to that power page and we'll create some links of buttons here to load some user information. And when we click on the particular user, it will go to a detailed page, right? So let's go and see how this is done. So back in here, make sure your app is running. I run mine already, so that's um, ready to go. Now I went ahead and added a um, a data model in here, just a very simple file I call users.data.ts, and it stores about mm, four records of, of users. So they have, have the ID, the first name, the last name, email, and the title for that particular user. Okay, and then um, in the uh, let's see. So yeah, so that's that's fine. And so in the components, I'm going to go ahead and modify the about component here to import this user in here, and we're going to use that to populate the view and the component to make those linkable, clickable. But before we do that, let's go and create a component called user to dis display those user information. So down here, I'm going to create another tab. Go to my app, and then I will generate a component. NG GC inside the components folder uh, user and uh, no style sheet and no test. Okay, so while that's been generated, I'm going to close that now. Hopefully, it's, it works fine. Let's go into the routes and add our navigation route in here. So for this one, we're going to put right above the stars. And I'm going to say it's going to go to your uh, user slash and then colon ID. Okay. And this will come from the user component. Okay. So that URL is now done. We can close this now. And then now go to the about HTML page. We're going to open that. Also the about component. And we're going to import the, um, the user information here. So I'm going to import the user, I think it's users from the um, models folder and then the user data. Okay. So, and then now in the class here, I'm going to create a variable called users. Oops, not that one. And it's going to be assigned to the users. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for this one. We just need to go and then update our view to create those information. So I'm going to delete this. Well, um, maybe we'll just, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't need this one here. 
we're going to use a different one. So maybe we'll use like, um, a span tag and then we'll have a class uh, um, up and down, maybe like two or four, I guess, some, just some spaces. And then here we'll put some information. And instead of the card, I'm going to just use a column to um, give us some uh, 12 and it's a padding of four or something. Okay, so in here, then we're going to generate each of those links. Um, so I'm going to use a, uh, a ng4 loop here to loop through the entire list. ng4 and say let uh, user of users and then we're going to you know um, generate in here all the links. So use a type will be button. Uh, let's get some classes in here. Um, btn and then btn uh, uh, maybe medium I guess and we'll use some primary color blue. Okay so that's that and then here will be the information we're just going to put the at uh, the name okay so the user well yeah user dot um, first name and then also the last name I guess okay we'll display that in the in the link and then we need to add the router in here so I'll use the router link that is going to point to now you have two options in here okay so you can do you can go something like um, go to the user and then the ID would be you can do something like that user dot ID that's one way and this is fine or you can use the other way you can bind this to the property router link and then you pass in here um, a, an, a list of information so the first part is the route which is like that and the second parameter is the ID field okay so either way is fine but for this one here I'll use this one here something kind of new right and if you pass more data then again that would put a slash if you put a third one here for example let's say one two three and then we'll put a slash so user slash ID slash one two three and that won't that won't match the pattern so that's uh, something else or you can pass in an object and and that will work but then that is something else completely different it's called the matrix um, I think URL so we're just gonna use that for now right so save this and see what happens if we go to the view so here is my buttons and if I click on it and you see that it goes to the user and the ID is one if I go back and ID two and so forth so far so good and so now we're going to go and update the user template to display the information here so let's go back in here and uh, let's go to the users HTML we're going to open that and also this one here okay so let's deal with this one first now we need to import the user information here as well coming from the models and then user that data the same as before in here in the constructor and um, the class um, you want to use a, a user uh, now I'm showing you one way and show you another way as well so this will have a little bit different so usually you put like a user here equals to user because you, we're not displaying the entire list just one user right so uh, if I put like an empty constructor like an empty list like that now it's not gonna work because if I do this if I go to the user HTML it's, it's probably gonna yell at you when I add some data here so let's go and um, let's see I'm gonna add some just some information to this uh, user HTML page so that we can maybe I'll just copy this uh, yeah I'll just copy this or we'll put it into this page here and we'll just maybe modify um, the title will be the user dot first name 
and then we'll put here the user that last name. I want to show that on the very top, and then um, below that we will show maybe not span anymore, but I'm going to show just maybe the paragraph tag. Well, I still want to use the user information, so I'll put here the paragraph to show the user. Um, here will be not as well as we do this whole thing. This will be like the title, the jet, their title, user dot title, and then below that we'll add another one. This is the email. We only have four fields, so it's just the user email. Okay, so you notice that how all these like red squiggly lines. If you have the Angular uh, language service package or extension install, it will tell you all the errors because now this is true because if you look at the the uh, source, I don't really have anything here. So user dot you know first name last name it's not there. That's why it won't work. And so what you do is that you have to have a uh, a pattern right um, to set up that already and. In this case, it will work. But for now, um, so what you do is you will create what's called, I guess, an interface or another class to represent the shape of your user. And, and that's quite common. And you can do that in an external file and, and put it in. Or in this case, it's quite simple, so I just put it here, okay? I'm going to go and copy one of these um, uh, data from the user model. Maybe just the first field here. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to create an interface for this one here. So I can say interface a user. Maybe a user just is the interface, and no bracket there. So the ID field, yeah, just create a new one. And yeah, well, I, I don't want to put actual data here. Okay, uh, you would just put like the type of data. In this case, I'm going to just use numbers, not numbers. And this one, let's, let's, let's do it all over again. I don't like this. Um, so we're going to have like <coughs> a, an interface to show all these information. So this one here will be just ID, number, and then the next one will be first name of type string, Okay, I'll just duplicate that a couple times. And then this will be the last name. This is the title and then email. So this is the shape of my user, right? So now instead of saying empty like this, I'm going to set this to the type of user. Okay, so you see now if I do that, now it contains this shape. So in my view, all these errors go away because now they are there, even though they are nothing in the content. Okay, so very common to do that. So now we have this data coming in from the view when it comes in to uh, as you know with an ID. So we need to import a few things in here and we need to do it uh, one injection and we're in injecting the activator route. It's a special um, a mo module um, that will be used to get the data from the, the, um, the URL. So we need to in import it in here in the router um, module. So you can import it here automatically or uh, manually. You can go here into the injector inside the constructor here and you create a variable called um, like route and then that would take the type of in the um, uh, activated router right here, activated route right here. Okay, and that will be imported automatically for you. And I think that's all you need for this one here. And then down in the constructor down here, I mean initialization. When the first time this is created, I am. Um, let me also put here. Well, yeah, console log. I put a message here. Just say user constructor. So this will show that a new constructor it runs every time when you run this to this page. And here, then we need to get the ID from the pattern. And remember, our route takes an ID field. Okay, I mean back in the um, back in the route here. So we need to grab this ID. Whatever you call here, this is the parameter we want to retrieve. 
right? So let's go back here, and then we want to say, um, we got an ID. We're going to set that to the ID that we're going to retrieve from the uh, from the pattern. So um, it's be coming from this route. So this route, this route refers to this route here. Notice I put a private here. Sometimes you have to put a private or public. And if you don't, if I take it out, you see that this doesn't work. It doesn't reach it anymore. And the reason why is if I do it this way, then this route is local only inside the constructor. Okay, to make it global in the uh, class space, you have to either put the private or public um, uh, uh, um, modifier to make that available in the, in the global space. That's one way to do it. Another way is you will have to create a local variable outside here um, as user, and then inside the constructor, you will have to um, assign that to the route here. But um, so this is the preferred way to do it. Okay? Make it private, and then you can access it right away. So now let's go and then do the um, uh, retrieval. So through this route, through this activator route, there is a snapshot. That's where you put a snapshot here. So the snapshot uh, takes a, a parameter, another interface here, which take another function called get. And inside this get function is where you're going to get the actual data. The parameter is what goes in here. So ours is the ID. Okay, so now we got the ID. And then now to retrieve the field or the record from the user, the actual user's list here, then we need to fetch the ID and return the record out into so we can use it. Right? And you can do it, you know, a couple of steps, but I'll just do it in a very in a single step here to show. Um, made the code a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna update this user up here to this new record from the users object. So users, that's the one we we imported inside the users page you can see out uh, of uh, the data we have a lot of these so if you if you pull the first id find this id if it matches then grab this entire record okay that's what we're trying to do here so from the users you need to get an id right what id is it so this is the end of that string right what id is it well i need to find out based on this id here so i will use a function called find index so in here i use the users dot find index return the index for every element that matches the ID of this ID. Okay? And then it returns that ID, the index here. If it's a one, it returns a one and two and so on. Now if you see here, let's see what does it say? Uh, we have a um yeah, I have a, a mismatch here. I'm returning a string and my data ID says it's a number. So that means we have to convert this. We have to cast this this whole thing here. Okay. So I'm going to put here in the front, I'm going to parse it with an integer to make this a number type. <clears throat> okay, so one was retrieved the ID of the index of one, that's the index of zero, the users of zero returns that user, and that will get displayed in the view. Okay, so let's save this and let's see if this works. All right, so here we go. I already see that already. Let's go back to the about page. If I click on Keen, you see that Keen information shows up here. Go back again, and then, and so on. If you press the F12, you will see that every time you go to that um, user, we have a user constructor being recreated every time. So go back, click on Ricky, right? So if it generates that component every time, you navigate to that page. So that is how you will retrieve data or parameter from the URL.